So um, I'm David Irani. I'm a faculty member in the neurology department here at U of M, and I'm also um, uh, work in the uh, MS clinic. And I'm charged with the uh, the task about talking about more controversial uh, uh, subjects in the management of of multiple sclerosis. Um, so we're out a little bit more on thin ice here. We talked about the subtypes of MS and uh, therapies that are in, uh, that are already approved or that are in trials. Um, but it turns out that many of the questions that we get asked in the clinic relate to things that are a little bit r removed from those subjects. And so um, as I thought about the kinds of things that I commonly get asked by patients in the clinic and what we might cover today, this was my uh, top four list. Um, uh, so some alternative treatment regimens. Um, I get asked a lot about the use of uh, marijuana for medical purposes and the treating, treatment of, of MS-related symptoms. So we're gonna, that's going to be one of the topics of conversation for uh, this morning. Um, Patients commonly ask me about the uh, role of stem cells in treat, treating MS, so cell-based therapies for regeneration. I actually talked about that last year, uh, so we're not going to go over that today. Um, and then uh, one of the very hot-button topics uh, in our field right now is this so-called liberation therapy or treatment of what we refer to as CCSVI, chronic cerebrospinal venous insufficiency, and that's the thing I'm going to talk about first. So what is CCSVI? Can I just ask people to raise their hands if you've heard of this before? So maybe a third of you. Okay. So it's out there and it's been out there for the last few years and it's generated a lot of conversation um, amongst patients, caregivers, healthcare providers. So what is it? So I'm going to take a few minutes and give you a brief uh, anatomy lesson about the, vein, the veins that drain uh, blood from the brain and spinal cord. So blood is carried into the brain and spinal cord by the arteries and it's drained out of the brain and the spinal cord by the veins. So you have two major veins in the front of your neck, the jugular veins that drain blood out of the brain and then there's a, ch uh, a, a group of veins that drain blood out of all levels of the spinal cord. They're the uh, vertebral veins and they drain into this structure called the azagous vein and all these veins return blood back to the heart. So the ar arteries carry oxygenated blood to the tissues and then the veins carry the deoxygenated blood back to the heart so it could get reoxygenated again. So this condition of uh, CCSVI or venous insufficiency occurs whenever narrowings develop in these veins. So the blood flow is restricted. So uh, blood return to the heart is either slowed or even reversed due to a back pressure phenomenon. And that forces blood to find alternative routes, sometimes causing the formation of new veins or collateral uh, veins. So this is just right out of anatomy textbook here. And this is a picture of the jugular veins um, on the far side here on each side of the neck um, that bring blood uh, down into the heart. And this is the spine and the vertebral veins that carry blood into this structure called the azagous vein and the heart's been removed here so all the veins are carrying blood from above and below back to the heart to get reoxygenated. So we can find blockages in both arteries and veins by doing tests. Um, uh, usually that involve the injection of dye. Um, so in, in this is a test called a venogram where we're injecting dye into veins and you can see here um, uh, on the left that there's a little catheter or tube that's been inserted here um, and the arrow points to where the catheter ends and the dye is being injected into the jugular vein and you can see an area up here um, that looks narrow. So it, it, the dye fills the vein up and the x-rays take pictures of it and you can see there's a blockage here and here's a blockage in the azagous vein um, right here and the arrow it looks almost twisted or inverted. Um, so we can find these blockages uh, by, by tests called venograms. So why in the world would a vein abnormality be involved in the uh, development or the, uh, the progression of multiple sclerosis? So the answer is we don't really know, but the theory is that we commonly find veins at the center of MS plaques. So Dr. Siegel talked to you about the 
plaque of multiple sclerosis that we can see uh, uh, by MRI scans. And under the microscope, there are white blood cells in these plaques. And right at the center, there's a blood vessel here. So this is also a picture of a blood vessel in red and the white blood cells around it. So these are commonly inside MS plaques. And, and that's where the, the white blood cells start to go as they leave the bloodstream and enter in the nervous system to cause the lesions of MS. So how could vein abnormalities somehow be related to the development of disease? So this is the hypothetical sequence of events that takes place in CCSVI. So if these veins start to narrow, blood backs up because they, it, blood doesn't have the proper ability to flow out um, through the normal channels, and that causes back pressure. And back pressure may allow some of the blood to actually leak out of the vein. So there are little tiny micro hemorrhages in the, in the brain and the spinal cord. And blood cells, their main job is to carry oxygen. Um, and the main protein inside blood cells that carry oxygen is hemoglobin. And hemoglobin requires iron. So when, whenever there are blood cells that break down, one of the things that's left behind is iron. So it can get deposited in the tissue. And it's thought that iron may actually be the trigger um, for the immune cells that either begins the disease process or moves it along. So this is the hypothetical sequence of events here. So the, the um, relationship between vein problems uh, and multiple sclerosis first came to light um, in the, at the end of 2008. And it was prompted by a very um, uh, controversial research paper generated by a group of Italian uh, specialists headed by um, uh, a professor, Paolo Zamboni, who's actually a vascular specialist. He's not a neurologist. Um, and they um, decided to look for the presence of these vein abnormalities in a group of patients with MS and a group of patients who didn't have MS. So they studied 65 patients that had multiple sclerosis and 235 patients that didn't have MS. And some of these um, control patients were normal, healthy individuals, elderly subjects, people with other types of neurological diseases, and then other patients that were getting vein tests for other reasons. And they used both the venogram, the dye injection test, and they used an ultrasound test called a Doppler. Um, so you might be familiar with um, uh, these tests when you can use um, ultrasound to image a, a developing baby in a, in a pregnant woman. And we can use Dopplers to uh, image blood vessels as well, both arteries and veins. Um, and it's a very um, convenient test because it's non-invasive. You don't have to in insert a catheter. There's no need for dye injection. So what they found and published in, the, in, a, in a medical paper in the, in the literature was that there was a high proportion of blockages in the azagous vein and the jugular vein in patients who had multiple sclerosis. Um, but these blockages were not found in patients who didn't have MS. And this very high relationship between uh, the disease and these blockages suggested to these investigators that there might be a cause and effect relationship between uh, the two. Uh, findings. Um, and um, they developed a set of criteria um, using this Doppler test um, uh, to examine these patients. And you don't have to dwell on the details. There's five of them here listed. And they all involve uh, either some altered blood flow or altered um, uh, uh, diameter um, of the veins in the neck uh, and had region. Um, and uh, they used this Doppler test to study their patients as well. And this is an example of, of those uh, Dopplers. So it can, can see the blood flowing. So here's a normal patient here. Um, and the jugular vein and the carotid artery live right next to each other in the neck. The blood flow is in, in healthy people in different directions. So the uh, artery is carrying blood up to the brain, and the vein is draining blood out of the brain. So this is these different colors represent different directions of blood flow. Uh, but in an MS patient, what they found was not only were the jugular veins uh, narrowed, but the flow was in the same direction. So it had reversed its direction of flow. Um, and when they used these five criteria, 
and they did these Doppler tests in the group of MS patients and control patients, they found that they were very commonly abnormal in the MS patients and very uncommonly abnormal in the people who didn't have MS. And if you used a method where you had to have two or more of these criteria that were positive, they found that 100% of MS patients had it, uh, two or more of these abnormalities, whereas 0% of MS patients um, had two or more of these positive criteria. And when you use a statistical analysis, these were very highly uh, significant between the two groups. Again, suggesting that there may be a cause and effect relationship between these narrowings and the disease. 